starting the recording now. So good morning, everybody. I'm Charles from Paladin. Been here about 10 years. My role here is Chief Retention Officer. Today, we're going to be talking about the new delivery functionality. This is the Mobile 2 delivery functionality. It has a number of enhancements to it that give it some more power and, and robustness. So we're just going to jump right into it. What we'll do here is we'll go to our first slide, which normally the agenda slide, but on this one, I've just got a couple of different, uh, well, lots of different information as to what's provided in the new update. I'll be going over each one of these, dissecting each one of these to try to uh, convey the changes, and I'll show you the screenshots as well. Not going to be actually going into the application today, but we're going to be showing screenshots of the PowerPoints and then also of the delivery app on the mobile device. So uh, just to go through these, uh, we've changed where the delivery scheduler button is. We've moved it from the um, from the in first invoice screen to the checkout screen. <clears throat> also, uh, the scheduled scheduled delivery details are collected uh, later on in the checkout process. We also can have added the capability to run scheduled delivery for uh, stored quotes and on holds and special deliveries. That was kind of the reason we moved that button. We'll be talking about the uh, when you enter the delivery details and how the project information can autofill the delivery address. That gives you uh, another way to increase efficiencies. Deliveries can be scheduled for a specific time frame and time window and that uh, definitely avoids any time conflicts. And you can determine the duration of that time, whether it's 15, 30, 60 minutes. Delivery details on the invoices have been updated. We'll show you that. And also, based on a number of re uh, a multitude of requests, we can attach the invoice to the customer's delivery notification email. A couple more items here. Uh, View deliveries sorted by date and time on the Mobile 2 Deliver app. View scheduled deliveries in Excel. This has been a request. A lot of folks don't always necessarily have a terminal they can run to to see the delivery schedule. So now you can actually get into the, um, the Excel document itself. And you can select the different configuration options in Paladin configuration window. So we'll go over each one of those. All right. The first one, go to the checkout tab for schedule delivery. So before, as I mentioned, the invoice screen was where you'd see scheduled delivery. That's after you selected a customer and added some items, then you'd see scheduled delivery. That had some limitations. It had limitations in that when you pulled up a quote, it hid that button, so you could not schedule delivery for quotes. That has since gone. And the new location of that uh, delivery schedule tab or um, command is now on the checkout screen. So pretty simple. That's probably the biggest change in the process if somebody's used to selecting schedule deliver, delivery at uh, the invoice screen. Now they have to do it at checkout. There's some other significant changes too as it relates to process, and we'll get into those uh, shortly. So when you're at the second screen, the quotes, the uh, checkout screen, you then uh, can check on the box scheduled delivery, and it puts a nice little red border around that button, meaning you're activating this for, uh, for uh, setting up delivery during the checkout process at the end after you've taken payment. So before the delivery details were collected immediately after you hit the scheduled delivery feature button, now it's collected at the end of the uh, actual invoicing. And by the way, I'm going to jump back for a second. If you click on the scheduled delivery button, then you decide you don't want to do a, a scheduled delivery, you can just click on it again and it unselects it. Okay, so. As I mentioned before, now quotes can be scheduled for delivery. Before, it used to have the um, the quote button uh, there, and now it 
has the delivery um, well on the checkout screen still has the recall transaction and uh, store quote button on this invoice screen but on the checkout screen is where we put the delivery button so now you can bring up the stored quote on hold or special order and you can now schedule those for delivery later on in the process so what happens why is how is it different well it's different that it, it gives you uh, two windows at the end of the transaction now here you're seeing three if you select a payment type of either um, the um, credit card or or account as the checkout box you're going to get the normal memo and PO number authorized signers and projects uh, what's next down the pike here is you're going to get two other steps if you've got the delivery button highlighted one is the first one shows you the details of the delivery resource or truck and duration and uh, other information and then the last gives you the delivery address that's step three we'll go through each one of these real quickly here so if we look at more detail the on that first screen if you do take a payment as an account payment and or credit card you can actually set up credit card to spawn this window that is an option in setup and when you do and if you do you'll get the memo and PO number authorized signers that may or may not be required and then also the project now in this case for deliveries you may want to consider putting a project address in there because that information is automatically transformed or transmitted to the final step of this process which is the delivery and defining the delivery address in between you have the uh, scheduled delivery for invoice delivery details where you can assign a truck a duration 15 30 60 minutes so on and then a delivery date and time uh, the email and phone number will be auto populated but you can override that with new information and same with the delivery address it will populate with whatever's under project but you can just override that and put in a different address if you wish blowing this up a little bit more so you can see this screen a little bit uh, better if you do select cash as a payment type or check or coupon and you select scheduled delivery this will be the first one you see this is a, the first step in the process will be to bring up the delivery details upon checkout so you've got your truck your duration your date and your time email and phone number and whatever special instructions you want to put in in this particular case we've said truck number two uh, at 11 a.m. for 60 minutes I mean it's going to take a total time to getting from the prior delivery to this delivery and back and on to the the next delivery is going to take about 60 minutes so this has to be something that's a little bit further out of town the next screen well this is the same screen it shows you that you can bring up the time frame of when to pick and in this case if you did schedule something at that 1030 um, time frame you've only got uh, start times between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. are oh actually the start times are between 10 and and 12 are unavailable so it, it actually earmarks that as reserved already and you cannot overstep on that all right to continue here your delivery details on invoices have been updated we take the actual delivery information and put that into the ship to column we also take that phone number from the delivery window and we populate that into two areas one is the invoice itself so later on when you recall this invoice you'll have the information of where it went when it went there what the uh, address was and, and contact phone number but it also puts it on the ship to on both the delivery and the invoice so it puts it it puts that delivery address underneath the ship to uh, field so when you produce a delivery hard copy it will show it in the ship to and on the invoice and when you produce an invoice which is the the final invoice which comes out before you press the delivery 
uh, it will also put it on the ship too and in the invoice. It also is going to include the PO number as well. If we look back here, you'll see the PO number is on there. And we've also eliminated all those extra spaces. There were some uh, spaces that were making some of these ridiculously long. So we've reduced that and truncated all that information and just compressed it. To move on, here's a, a feature that a lot of folks have asked for. They want to see a copy of the delivery invoice sent to the actual contractor or owner or foreman or who's ever on the delivery site. And we now do that. This is a setup and configuration that you'll have to set. But once you set the configuration, it will just automatically produce an email. And instead of just saying that a, an invoice has been created, delivery invoice has been created, it actually attaches the PDF to the document. On the mobile device, now this is this is a change here. Uh, the mobile device now sorts it uh, chronologically by date and time. So it will naturally go through the different uh, the different addresses and delivery sites uh, in chronological order. So your driver can just follow down from top to bottom and and complete their their deliveries. Um, last but not least, you can view scheduled deliveries in Excel. So as I mentioned, a lot of folks will bring up the delivery scheduler. They'll be able to track where their driver is at any time. This is a window that's changed in real time, so it's kind of cool. And the status, you'll see a symbol of an exclamation point in an orange circle, but when it's delivered, it changes to a green checkbox. So that indicates that in real time, as the driver is going around, as they're closing out each of those invoices and delivery invoices, and the customer or foreman or owner, whoever is signing for that, you might also take pictures as well. That information is then uh, pushed up through a G4 connection through the mobile device and pushed it directly into the Paladin system in real time. So. Now, when you don't have access to this scheduler and you want to reference what are my deliveries for the day, you might want to print that out. And you can take that print out in Excel and have that for reference anytime during the day. And when you get an opportunity, you can go to the system and see what the status is. But the hard copy, obviously, is going to remain with an open status unless you reprint it. So those are all the features. Some of these features have to be turned on in the configuration options window in Paladin. And what you'll find is if you go to the file setup under the Paladin configuration window, you'll see the delivery tab. In the delivery options uh, and delivery truck panes, you can specify your preferred options. And starting with top left here, delivery truck required, so you can make it to where it's requiring them to put a delivery resource in there. Phone number uh, can also be required, as well as attach invoice to delivery emails, as I mentioned. Besides that, you can set the range of delivery times, the delivery slot intervals from five to 10 minutes, 15, 30 minutes, and then your delivery truck uh, names and assign you can assign those names to your trucks now you can either assign names to the actual vehicle or the resource or the delivery company or the driver it's it's up to you but we just call it a delivery truck name for that and that uh, my friend concludes the upgrades that have been made to mobile deli to deliver and as well as our delivery scheduler. I hope you found this useful. To reference this information, you can just go to uh, the help portal, which you click on the help button in Paladin, go to, uh, I believe it's under uh, features and fixes, or you can actually go to your splash screen and just type in um, delivery. And hopefully you'll see a first one that pops up will be this information. So to give you more detailed information, also at the end of this webinar, 
We're going to go ahead and post this. We're, I'm recording it now. We'll post it onto the Paladin webinar website and also include the set of uh, the slide deck for you as well if it's helpful. All right, now I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions. I don't see any questions. If you like, you can uh, raise your hand, and what I'll do is I'll un either uh, unmute you so you can ask questions, or you can just anonymously type in your questions at the uh, on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I figured there weren't going to be too many questions. It's pretty straightforward. The you know there are some significant changes into how this how deliveries are entered and processed, but it's it's pretty much the output is the same, the result is the same. We've just cleaned up a, uh, some stuff here, made the scheduler work a little tighter, and um, and allow you to do things that you weren't able to do before, like schedule quotes for delivery. All right, very good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and sign off, folks. I thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. As always, um, we'd love to see you. We're going to be here again on December 11th. And on December 11th, uh, which is a Tuesday, we're going to be doing the end of year reporting requirements. So you might want to stay tuned for that one. Again, December 11th, year end reporting. We'll be talking about uh, the different reports that you're probably going to need by December 31st for accounting purposes and then other cleanup things and, and best practices that you can do. We look forward to seeing you then. Again, signing off, Charles Owen here, and uh, hope to see you guys again. Thanks a lot for your time.